Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to On the Mic with the M. And T. And today, the topic is <laughs> whew, the slap heard around the world. Um, T, what's your opinion, opinion of that, in this entire situation? Huh, it's one that I think changed a few times. Mm -hmm. um, initially, I think I formed the f initial opinion, um, give it a few days, and I think, you know, kind of switched around. First, it's like, let that man defend his woman. Um, because if that's you know genuinely how you felt, then defend your woman, yeah, by I guess by any means necessary. Um, but then you take a step back and say, wow, you're not really on the the level, so to speak, that Will Smith is operating on. Mm -hmm. um, it's just like the different positions you hold in the workplace, right? Uh, if you have just an entry-level position, you're going to walk around different than someone who's the GM. Your liability is a lot uh, larger. Mm -hmm. um, you got more to lose. Um, more people are looking looking at you. Um, so initially, I wasn't really looking at it from the, um, I guess, the mindset of like him being a leader, right? Mm -hmm. Just that's that's just that's your wife, you know, take care of her. Mm -hmm. um, but also, he truly is a leader in that realm. And sometimes you got to swallow some things and take the high ground. And he didn't. And that was the hardest pill to swallow, whereas, you know, he makes hard decisions all the time over all these years. And in this situation, that that it just wasn't the proper choice. It just it just wasn't. Yeah. I, the first thing I thought about was, why would you get up and slap someone? And, and I want to say this. When you're in that world, it's not like, you know, you're on the streets or you, mm -hmm. you know, just dealing with your boys on the streets or just people on the street. You're with the A-listers. You're with the one percenters. There's a way you have to carry yourself. Right. And he didn't carry himself the way he should have. And if he had an issue with, with Chris Rock, and I'm pretty sure they talked. I'm pretty sure he didn't just say, oh, there's Chris tonight. I haven't seen him in years. I'm pretty sure he talked to him. And if you had an issue with that, then you should have just looked at him when that joke came across, giving you that look. It looked like, I got you. But we're going to handle this. Off, to, off the record. We're not going. I'm not going to get up. I'm not going to slap you. I'm not going to put my hands on you. I, I just kind of assumed it was one of those situations where we did have a running prior to, and I already let you know that you should keep my folk name up out of your mouth, mm -hmm. and if not, then X, Y, and Z could occur, mm -hmm. and you kept on playing, right? True. Like, I just kind of feel like the warning was already there, and so the very idea that he took it there... I, I I don't want to say the man is a loose cannon by any means. I I feel like he's a level headed person. That couldn't I have been the first so. run in. Like I didn't just walk up to that man and slap him off the jump. Like nah, he disrespected us a few times. And and again, to me, he he got be he has to be a grown. They're grown men. They're all grown men. Absolutely. Um, and so if you're a grown man, there's certain things you're not going to do. You're not going to walk up to a grown man unless. He's gonna put your hand, his hands on your wife or your girlfriend or your significant other, or he says something so crazy to you that you like, you know, I'm I'm have to maybe talk talk to him later on about this. I'm still gonna put my hands on him because I have to make sure and show the world that words someone can't control me with some words that you said because now that's telling me that hey I say things to you and I can make you react if I if I call you a sucker then you are gonna put your hands on me so now you're controlling my emotions. I don't have control of my emotions. Right, right, which which speaks to the leadership, right? Mm -hmm. Normally, if I if I lead my own situation, nobody, if I lead my own vehicle, nobody can drive it. I give my keys to no one, mm -hmm. right? My emotions, my whatever, I run that show. Mm -hmm. And so it it was uh, something to see someone in such a position lose control. Because yes. when you took a step back, no matter who you were defending or what situation happened prior to, it was a situation where an individual person truly lost control in a public setting. Very true. And I'm going to say this. This may be the elephant in the room, mm -hmm. but Jada calls all this. And, and I'm, I'm going to say she calls. What we saw was the effect. The cause happened before the, for instance, if you see something on television and you see a guy went off and stabbed his wife because 
she took the last ketchup um, bottle and she used the last little bit of ketchup. You're going to say, well, damn, he, he killed her over a ketchup bottle? Well, that's the effect of what happened. Mm-hmm. The cause could have happened over months, over years. But at some point, it just bu- it just clicked. It just, it, he just went crazy. And he said, I can't take it. I can't take it. And this this lady has made this guy a walking joke. He's a walking meme. First of all, this whole entanglement thing. Ah, back up off of Jada just a little bit, my dear M. Come on. Come on. Uh, come First of all, on. no woman is going to get on TV and say, well, okay, let's step back. If a guy came and said, hey, you know, I slept with such and such. That's not the point for her to say, well, yeah, we had this little entanglement and blah, blah, blah. Hey, entanglement, if I'm walking down the street, I trip and fall into some bushes. I got entangled <laughs> in some got some damn bushes. That's entanglement. But if I go in and fall into somebody between someone's legs, that's not an entanglement. That means some conversation had to happen. That means there had to be some vibe there. There had to be a feeling. There had to that's be something. That's why it was an entanglement as opposed to, you know, the guy who I was sleeping with. That's why, Will, I'd, I'd assume was in his feelings because perhaps you slept with someone and caught feelings. And maybe we do sleep with other people within our marriage. I don't know. I hear that is the rumor. Mm-hmm. But perhaps we don't give our feelings away. And in that situation, I, we'd, I'd assume that that's what occurred. Hey, I, I was a part of the group who believed and bought into the idea that um, this couple was truly involved in an open marriage lifestyle mm-hmm. and the um, entanglement. I don't recall us ever speaking about any of Will's run ins or mm-hmm. lady friends or anything that he's been involved or who he's been involved with Mm -hmm. but somehow you know jada's situation gets put on the forefront and now we gotta speak about it and then we gotta go deep into you know how deep her you know situation was all the way up until the point where we realized it was truly an entanglement meaning there were feelings involved um and then your man is sitting there with you know crocodile tears in his eyes because he is hurt because you probably almost real live left the marriage for this man which can happen but i don't know why we aired all this to the streets anyway i just there i you just go. don't know there i just you go. don't know why the hell do i care about what goes on in your house and, and and second of all if someone made a comment about anything that went went on between the two of you you don't have to go out there and tell the world you don't have to get on ig mm-hmm. get on any kind of mm-hmm. podium any kind of Stadium and say, oh yeah, we we this did happen. Yeah. I don't really care. It's because like the again, lighter fluid to my own situation. Exactly. Yeah. And so why would I want to even put not only him but my kids? Because then my kids got on look and said, damn, my my parents are doing that kind of craziness. Yeah. They're going on. So now it, he's a meme. Then everybody looks up and says, damn, he's a joke. And now he's he you right, he's crocodile tears. He's he's why he's uh-huh. sitting there just in shock. And now he has to hear all this. He keeps eating at him, eating at him, eating at him. So you think that this is the thing that got Will to the breaking point of losing self-control? Is be- Ultimately, it sounds like you're blaming it on the red table talk. Well, no. I, I blame on the host children. of the of the red table talk. The host started all this. She could have very easily just not even, not, the guy came up well, I slept with her. I ain't got to make any comments mm-hmm. because it's no one's business if, if we did sleep with each other or not. But when you went out and said, yeah, it was an entanglement, then you pulled everybody into your world. Okay. And nobody needs to be in your world. I mean, you're, you're, you're a movie star. You, you do all these great things. Nobody needs to know everything about you. You should be open 24-7, 365. That's your personal life. And, and you the keep making mistakes. The transparency is what you're saying you have an issue with at yes. this point. It's too yes. transparent. And too that transparent. marriage is not supposed to be transparent. No, because now you open your life up to every Tom, Dick, and Harry mm-hmm. who has some sort of opinion of what I would have done and I could have done this. And they, again, don't understand how their life lives, how they run their lives. Don't understand this open marriage situation, which is another thing. How are you going to have an open marriage and not catch feelings? Because somebody going to catch feelings one way or the other. Another story that, you know, maybe the son, maybe one of those, those columns would have ran and try to pull something out. But if you don't have any, any, any oxygen to feed the fire, fire goes out. But you gave him oxygen. And now you put him in a situation where he looks weak. 
he looks like, oh, you, you're just a clown. And the other thing is she keep bringing up Tupac. Now, <laughs> you can bring up Tupac, right? The daughter talked about, to my mama would have loved you. You're still here, Tupac. You know, you know Tupac is, is in Arizona somewhere, you know, doing some, True. doing this new album, you know. <laughs> but, you know, but the whole thing, it's just, it's just, it makes Will look like just a patsy. It looks like that he's just, hey, you know what, I got a guy, I can, I can be there with him, I can use him. I could, you know, live off of him. He's gonna do what he what he's gonna do for me, and you know, I'm just gonna ride this until I find something better. And it just made him look really, really bad. Plus, he let the situation take him to a level he shouldn't have. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if he has anyone he could talk to about it. Because again, at that stage, you know, at that point in life, when you're at that level, it's a lot of people you really can't trust because. You don't know if they're just going, okay, I'll listen to you. And next you know, they're calling on the phone, going to get that million dollar for, you know, hey, Will talk to me. He told me he hurt and he all in his feelings. He ready to right, cut the dude. Right. So that's a, that's something that a lot of people, we don't think about being, our, you know, our level. We're not at, a, at the top 1%. So, you know, even though we, we have people we surround ourselves with that we don't trust a lot, but you just around us. But can you imagine someone who will sell you up for a bag in a heartbeat because, Hey, I get this quick money because everybody's about that. They're about that quick money, and and you know how can I further my agenda? And that may be you know how do I get my face on the on the on the on the tape on the TV and right or get my voice on the radio. I didn't to me, but the red table talk when it first went down, it didn't strike me as like you know that quick money piece. It to me, I I thought it was like an attempt to build a legacy, like us on our own two feet. Mm -hmm. um, that's it and that's all. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't need someone to call us out to their um, network or to their television studio. We don't need them to pay us. You know, we'll mm -hmm. generate the money. We'll generate the shows. And almost like a grassroots approach mm -hmm. um, to TV casting. Um, I just didn't think that we would necessarily use ourselves mm -hmm. as a thing to sell. And I think that that's you know the part that you speak to when you mention the children and the you know the marital lifestyle um that's just a little bit too much on display but how is that still her fault well, was this not allowed like perhaps it was an idea of hers but it, are you not like allow what, did it, were, did she did he not allow this you know i i'm not sure I, and they both have their they have their own fault when it comes to this. I mean, you don't get to this point without certain things you allow to happen, right? Just because you know, oh, it's going to keep peace in the house. I'm allowed it to happen. Again, it's open marriage. I don't know if it was a mutual decision mm -hmm. or she said, "Listen, I want to have other people." He said, "We don't know," because that never came up. Back up. Because back up, that should have been a situation where, um, you know, again, when you open yourself up like that. You open yourself up to everything. So now we're asking, well, how did it get to this point? Because that slap made people now think there must have always been an issue. There's always some issue Absolutely. going on. Absolutely. Because, listen, if there wasn't an issue prior to, you were really out of control. What yes. moved you so swiftly to get up and say, I'm going to, you know, put my hands on, you know, this man who... I mean, he's just as great as you are. <laughs> yes. How do you demean this man on such a level if there was nothing else in the back? Like, <sighs> he has never disrespected you prior to. It's hard to believe that mm -hmm. you would go and disrespect him on such a level. That's too much. So I need for there to have been some backstory on what he did and didn't do to you before. I, you know, and, and again, I, it's hard to believe that he didn't think that it would be some serious repercussions by putting his hands on someone. Um, your emotions should at, at that point is it's I call it grown man, um, grown man, grown man says it's just certain things I'm just not going to do, unless someone's life is in jeopardy. I'm not going to kill someone unless my life is in jeopardy. Right. I'm not going to smack a guy because he made a joke. It's not like we're in a party or in a club, and all of a sudden he he touches my wife, and then then you don't have to have a conversation with him. Right. But I'm not going to just automatically put my hands on him because. This escalation of violence, which is so prevalent in society, society in general, we need to get away from that. So you got people say, well, dang, Will Smith smack people, then violence, I guess, is acceptable. If you your feelings get hurt, I guess you could put hands on someone. We know it's not. Because ultimately, is that what just happened, that somebody's feelings got hurt? 
Can we do, he, can we agree to that? He hurt his yes. His feelings were definitely hurt, and he should have handled that differently because mm-hmm. he he's Will Smith. He's a clean rapper. He's that guy. Right. You know. You know. He's you could bring him home. You know. He's oh, if your daughter dated him. Oh yeah, that's Will Smith. He's cool. Wholesome. Wholesome. Yes. Wholesome dude. I, yes. You know, I love him. You know, his his squeaky clean music. Nice guy. I want him. You know, it's not like he's bringing. You know, you bringing someone like you know, the two live crew or someone Mm -hmm. to your house or someone who's doing illicit drugs and Mm -hmm. sex with everybody and, Mm -hmm. you know, selling dope and all that. I mean, he's that guy. So when he did that, it was like, wow, he put his hands on someone? What? Wow, is this feelings all, is he all in his feelings like that? So now he now has to deal with it. And he's never, no matter how how many great things he has ever done and will do in the future, he will always be known as the slap. And that's the unfortunate thing for him. That is the unfortunate part uh, because he's worth and done so much more than that. Mm-hmm. And, th- I mean, it's a tarnish on your career. Um, and you still want to stand firm and saying that it's all Jada's fault. That's the crazier part to Okay, me. okay. I'm, she, Whose she, fault is it? <laughs> it's, uh, she is the uh, cause of the effect. Okay. So if she didn't do what she did, he wouldn't have done what he did. So tell me what exactly she did to cause it. She added oxygen to the fire. When that guy came out, based on what I've heard, this mm-hmm. guy came out and said, you know, I slept with Jada. She had to come out and say, oh, yeah, you know, it was an entanglement. For me, she should have said nothing. Because two grown people, consenting adults, whatever happened, happened it's between you and your husband. But you gave this guy airspace. You gave this guy airplay who really shouldn't have got airplay. I mean, who the hell knows? I don't even remember the guy's name. Mm-hmm. I don't even know him. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. now you now you, you tie him to her, and now it's like, oh, that's a dude that slept with Jada. Right. So you gave him airplay. Right. He didn't deserve airplay. If y'all was just kicking it and doing what you want to do, okay, kick it. But just don't need to bring it up and, and basically say, yes, I did sleep with him. And then your husband now, like I said, looks crazy because now you're like, okay, you, you slept with him? And now, yeah, let's go on my show and let's talk about it. So do you think Will didn't think of the repercussions of showing up that day? I think Will was probably under a lot of pressure way before the time, but way before he got to that ceremony. I think it was been weighing on him. And I think in his mind probably is a way of showing chivalry or, you know, I'm standing for my wife. You know, because I'm looking soft out here in these streets. Mm-hmm. So I want to show the world that I'm just, not some cream puff, but really, I love my wife. I stand up for my wife. And, you know, since Chris Chris Rock made that joke, I'm just going to show the world. Even though she put his hand, now, when she put her, her hands on his arm, he should just sit right back down. And, but he wanted to go out and prove a point. He proved a point. Now he's out for 10 years going to the academy. He's lost Bad Boys 4. They put that on hold. There's two other movies they put on hold. So now, in his head, you probably mm, left about $60 million on the table mm-hmm. that may or may not ever come back. Right. So now, now you have to look and say, well, what does my future hold? I mean, I, I haven't seen Jada since set it off. I, I don't know if she's doing any movies that's going to bring some money into the house, but I, I don't know the What's long-term effect. Keep the- yeah, family where they normally been at. Uh-huh. I would not be surprised if they get a divorce. I would not be surprised if down the road they get a divorce because this is a lot to put on. You, they are in a stressful situation. They're a power couple. You know, they're A-listers. They're 1%. You know, they're, um, I wouldn't put them as the Obamas, but they're in that category, they're in that level two of of, of couples, couples that of couples. everybody Power has their couples. eye on them. Exactly. Absolutely. I could agree to that. Um, so they have now tarnished that. So now, where do you go from here? So that means they have to work on this. And this is kind of an eye opener for all couples, for mm-hmm. all relationships. If, you know, what will you do for your relationship? What will you do if something happened in your relationship and the pressure so much, will you lash out? Will you talk about it? I mean, 
Well, whatever you do, you should do it in privacy. That's number yeah. one. Keep your marriage private. Exactly. That's, off, that's, that's that is number one. So true. Stay off we IG. That, stay that off Facebook. Thing. Yeah. Stay off all that. That your your marriage is is a private, sacred space for you know the two people within it, and you need to bring in some elders, some counselors. You bring in those folks. You don't bring in the community. You don't bring in the Facebookers. You don't bring in your Instagrammers. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You don't bring in your whole two live <laughs> crew. So, um. To kind of weigh in on, you know, your hard stuff that you're going through within the marriage. Mm -hmm. um, I think that we can all learn from that in that sense that some things are better left private and left in a, and handled in a private setting. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, a learning experience that hopefully we won't see again. Um, and, you know, we just realize that everybody we're all human we all have feelings we all hurt and we just need to know how to really deal with it mm -hmm. i think as a society we don't really know how to know how to deal with pain uh rejection aggravation i think we lash out on ourselves sometimes and then we lash out on, uh, at others because i think as a society we don't really talk about that. that's something you don't really not really talk growing up for instance when i'm when i was brought up Oh, they put their hands on you. Something went wrong as a kid. Oh, they're going to hit you with a belt. They're going to hit you with a switch. They hit you with a shoe, hit back of your hand, or something. So for me, growing up, I said, I know that's not what I'm going to do to solve a problem or to get my point across if I have kids is put your hands on them right. or do any of that because you do damage to kids like that. And so that's something we need to learn that we need to be able to talk and communicate our feelings. And you may not like it, but at least you're able to talk about it. Let's put it on the table. Let's see how we feel about different things, to be honest. And let's settle it. Because if you don't settle it, just, it just festers. It, gets, it just gets worse and worse. And like I said, it festers. It becomes a, 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 a sore. And then it becomes infected. And all of a sudden, like I said, one day you go and you, you drink, a, drink some water. It's like a bad tooth. You drink water and all of a sudden it explodes. Mm -hmm. And it's not the, the water or the soda that made it explode because you neglected it. You didn't deal with it when you had to. Just like, oh, it gets better, but it, got, it gets getting worse. And little things start to creep in and make it even worse. So, you know, as a society, we need to do that. We need to have more conversations with each other. about. But we're actually dealing with the issues right up front as it, opposed to sitting there and letting them kind of fester thinking that they'll dwindle away with time exactly time heals all <laughs> <laughs> well that's that that's well. the you know that's the phrase that so many of us are raised <sighs> up with and you know that's the, eventually it turns into just let it fester exactly you know just let it fester and leave it there and eventually hopefully it'll fester away exactly mm -hmm. exactly so you know hopefully we'll learn um i don't think we will as a society we don't really have those conversations we're, we're so so small-minded at this point where it's just like we forget it if it happened 15 seconds later forgot it and move on to the next thing mm -hmm. um but in this particular case we definitely need to have conversations and need to teach our kids how to deal with conflict and you know resolution and that type of stuff because you know, if they see us acting that way, well, how are you going to tell them to act differently? Because kids do what you, they see, not what you say. Right, you lead by example. Absolutely. So the actions speak much louder than just your words <clears throat> that you try to portray onto the youth who sees and hears everything that you you don't want them to see or hear. Mm -hmm. Right? And then they eat that up and then kind of run with it. Um, and Will Smith was just, like you said, that clean rapper, and we just didn't have many of them. No. And then so for him to kind of lose that control, it really – it's 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 mind-boggling because how many more clean rappers do you have to kind of be that role model, so to speak, and that um, within our culture or community, so to speak? It's exactly. just not many. No, it really isn't. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, it's a very unfortunate situation. Um and like I said before, I hopefully we learn something from it. But we should, we'll wait and see. Right. We'll see. So this reminds me of the last thing they said when they closed out from that entanglement conversation. I think it was bad marriage for life. Because mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're calling for it. You're like, huh, maybe they'll divorce after this. I'm like, what if it's just a bad marriage for life? You know, there's this, just like I talked about 
recently about cracked, broken, and shattered. Mm-hmm. I also go with relationships. Uh-huh. You have people uh-huh. that, that, that happens to the ABC, the CBS mm-hmm. of people. There's also the CBS of marriage, of uh, relationships. Um, there's, a, there's so much stress that a relationship can take before okay. it's just shattered. Okay. And then you have to ask yourself, is it worth putting in the work to fix it? Uh-huh. Um, they've been together for a long time. They have grown kids now. Um, they could be at a point where it's like, you know what, enough is enough. Um, it's a facade now. And let's, let's do something different. Because at some point, you have to be happy. And, and to me, it seems like it's a, a photo op when I see them. It, it doesn't look like it's, they're happy. But can two people literally be involved for this long and it just not be nothing there to the marriage? I think they're, they're feelings, but I think they may have. Uh, we as humans, we're constantly changing. We're constantly evolving. You may not be evolving in the same level or area that the your partner could be. You, you know, you could be in a different spot. And at that point, you know, you ask yourself the question, is it worth spending the time to see if we can get back into that same realm um but that means you two have to really have a real 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 conversation like here's i mean you see it every day people someone just recently after 25 years get a divorce right and you're thinking damn 25 years you get a divorce yeah. 20 years um getting a divorce or 18 years and you're like wait a minute you've been here been with somebody that long i mean uh bill gates he was married to his wife damn near 35 years, and they got divorced, mm-hmm. and they loaded. And he, and so it was like, it's not the money. Right. So it's obviously they grew apart, and it's just like, I, we've been together for 35 years. I'm going to go ahead and give you whatever so I can get out the picture. Same thing with Bezos. He divorced his wife after 25, 30 years, and again, loaded. So in some cases, it's just like, you know what? I think we have come to the end of the road, and you got to be honest about that. Say, hey, we may be at the end of this particular ride, and I'm changing at such a level that I can't see you in the next chapter. Um, but that means you have to talk to each other and see where you are. We see where she's at. We see where he's at. But you got to be happy. That's the bottom line. Is if uh-huh. you can't do it just just off of oh you know y'all been together. It would look so just so for time's different. sake. Yeah. Don't stay together for time's no, sake. In other words. No, no, no. And and, it, and stay together for the kids. Kids grown now. Yeah. So you yeah. can't say, well, the baby's five or six years old. We I got mean, it. at this point, with that type of a couple, you'd assume that anything we're make, any decision that we're gonna make anything based off has to be just me and you. Yes. Uh, I can't imagine money being a major factor. Either we got it or we don't. Exactly. Um, the kids, like you said, they're grown and those the, the children have been independent. Um, and what's what's some more factors that we regular people would, you know, <laughs> consider? I don't think that that's really an issue for the, um, such a couple. It's really just, you know, our feelings and emotions. Do we still want to be here? Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. I mean, you probably know couples and people. I know I know people who are together. And you ask yourself the question, when you see them together, they look miserable. Mm-hmm. And you're like, you know, and you should never, no one should ever be in a situation where you wake up every morning and, and stick a mirror on if the nose and they're still breathing. I mean, I prefer for married couples to walk around and look miserable. That doesn't bother me. Like, not one bit. My, really? Yeah, I'm sorry. It doesn't bother me. It's the the couples who are dating. Five mm. years dating and you guys are miserable. No one cares to break up. <laughs> that that right? is so true. Your, your boyfriend and girlfriend. It's the people who real life showed up to the little altar and said, no, I'm going to say I do, and I'm going to try to give it my all. And you're miserable. Okay. And, you know, and, hey, maybe you know, me too, but you're going to try and see what you can do. But don't be miserable and be dating. I guess that's my Yeah. And, and, <laughs> that's and, the weird I, part I, to me. I do agree with you on that. And and it's almost like the same thing you, you know, you see on Just Judy, where they come in and they done bought a whole house together, bought all these furniture and stuff, and then they go to Just Judy and say, Hey, can we separate this stuff? And mm-hmm. the first thing she says is, Did you get married? Yep. Oh no. Oh, so you play house. Yeah, you played something. You play and house. And then you want to be mad, mad. Yes. Just say goodbye. <laughs> And by just the way, say goodbye. That is, and the one another thing that just gets me. I'm tired of people walking around saying hubby and wife, and they ain't got a piece of paper <laughs> at all. It's what cute. the hell does that mean? It's cute, cute. 
cute. No, they ain't cute. No. <laughs> I, they listen, love it. I got to put papers on you. If I got papers on you, then we can talk. We can say wife and husband. But don't walk around there just perpetrating a fraud. And, and you're not. Because if that's the case, make the move. No, because when you fall, bust your head, break your leg, car run over you, don't call me. You just my wifey. <laughs> no, no, call your mom, call your dad. Don't call me. That's what that means. Don't have that paper. That means something really hit the fan. Don't call me. But you just want to go out to lunch. Then I'm like, <laughs> you know, that's see, what that see. means. And, and my thing is, what, what, that's where, what that means. But think about this, T. Where the hell are we at this point where you rather perpetrate a fraud than to go ahead and make that walk and get married? Oh, yeah, no, you can't claim me like that. Oh no! You can I, no. If I fall, hit my head, bump in my head, and I'm not calling my mom. I'm calling up my man. No, I'm calling up you. Yeah. Uh, where where he at? Where's the hubby at? Bring him in. Oh. And he'll God. notify my father. See. Because we're not doing that. See that that's listen. I I came. You can't say that to me. My yeah. first thing I'm gonna ask you. You got papers? Yeah. Oh, I ain't got no papers. We've been living together for ten years. I mean, tell me a damn Why thing to me. Living together for 10 years first of all the old saying if i can get the milk for free why buy the cow well hey and if the cow dries up i can always find me another one i guess ouch that hurt my feelings this is what happens you put yourself in that situation and this is what happens to you you keep giving up the good milk hi y'all stop giving up the milk oh it hurts <laughs> just to think about it. they gonna go get them a new cow as soon as the They're milk going, dries let me ah, say this as doing. guys we're gonna get that cow we're yeah. gonna get that new cow nah. why we could be we could be 60 years old yeah. and still getting that cow. Yeah, getting that milk. I be looking good, good at look at a single woman at 60 versus hey, a single man now, at 60. Now, let me say this. As a guy, you have to keep your keep your game up. Mm-hmm. You can't just walk around with the pop belly and the bald <laughs> no, head. No, they still pulling with the pop bellies. Oh. Yeah, they still You better have a nice bank account. Yeah, yeah. And if that's the case. Cause, I uh, mean, by 60, if your bank account's not nice, like, what, what are you doing? Do you know how many people I know at 60 ain't got no bank account at all? Hopefully they're not single. Broke. I'm saying, hopefully they're not just single. Broke. Just broke. Just broke. Broke as a single. joke. Oh, you know, I tell you, they're single, but they live with other women who can't find nobody, so they're with them. Oh. That's what they're doing. Again, I, like, as I said, when it gets to a point where you get desperate. Mm-hmm. You're like, I, I don't want to be alone. Mm. Damn it, I can't be alone. I did not live this long to get to this point and not have no man and no nothing. As it's a ridiculous. woman. As single. a woman. Said I'll take anybody. Anybody. A Sixty year old broke man. Sixty year old broke man. You know Woo. what's that? Right now, the highest, tra- uh, the newest highest um, HIV uh, transmission transmission is fifty and old fifty five sixty four. Wow! No, I didn't know that at all. Fifty five sixty four, and the reason is because of these women at this point. They're looking for someone. And the guys could be in a situation, could be just getting out of jail, could be down low, could be a whole bunch of situations. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. you get entangled with this dude, mm-hmm. and now you get entangled by getting infected. Um, because you wouldn't think at 55 to 64, I wouldn't think about catching anything. You should have to be smart enough so to clean up. So you still just have raw relations? I'm with pretty sure. An older... Now, so we got older and dumber. I thought you was just young and dumb. So now no. we old and dumb too. Old now that's interesting. Too. Yes, old that's and dumb. So we're not gonna protect ourselves at fifty five and older because now, I guess he'd have made it this far without nothing. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I guess he good now. Yes. Wow. Yes. He good to go. And, and yeah. you're putting yourself at risk. And and again, that goes back to what I said before. You have to learn to love yourself. Absolutely. Wherever you are at that point, you have to love yourself. Because, I mean, at this point, who dates without sex on the table? Well, you know. So now you're telling me we're not only just doing it, we're just doing it raw, just loose, just with nothing. We're not going to cover nothing now. There's no hats going on. Hey. Because you think about, oh, you know, you're at this stage, you're not sick now, so, and and, you know, so let's try it. Then all of a sudden, oh, God, I, I got it. Mm-hmm. Well, now you now you're in another situation. Now you got something that you have to tell everyone. You have to deal with for the rest of your life. First of all, um, and I think if you tell somebody that you caught something or have something like herpes or AIDS or something like that or HIV, mm-hmm. I don't think you, your your likelihood of you find someone decent is going to really shoot through the roof. So you secure the deal, 
and then you try to fall in love later. Oh, is that what they're? I, I, I'm just trying to understand it. I, 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 I mean, don't know. It's crazy to me. 55 and older is, uh, is what you're saying at this yes. point, right? 55 and older is the newest um, HIV transmission. We just move on to the next. It sounds like we just move on to the next victim then. Uh, yeah, it, yeah, it could very well be. I mean, mm. but again, you know, you got guys. I hit, again, I'm a guy. I can I can tell you based on the guys I the guys I know, some of these bammers are so so sad that they're just like, listen, just just let me get in. Just let's give me get in the door. I'll I'll wash your car. I will take care of you. All I gotta do is you know be here with you. You know you take care of me. You know buy a little this and that mm-hmm. and everything. And I'll be here for you because it's like you know I'm trading my me for my, my being here for you. You know you gotta just kick a little money, a little something, something keep me here. You know. So you don't have the work. No, you don't have you don't you don't have retirement check. You don't have a disability check. check. I mean, well, I don't know. You better have some type of check. I would think so, but you have to also look at a lot of these guys who are coming out now. If they were in jail for okay, let's say the eighties, you went to jail for drugs in the eighties, uh-huh. and you get that long term, so you twenty, twenty five, thirty years deep, you're coming out. So the question is, if you were in jail for twenty, twenty five years, are you going to tell me that you were celibate for twenty, twenty five years? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, that that you better be saying that. Come yeah. on, come <laughs> see, on. See, see, see. That's no. absolutely what is being said. But, but again, you can't fathom that. Oh my God! Are you saying thirty years celibacy for in prison? Yes. There's no one else to do it to do it. What did they do? Become Muslim? I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Oh my God! Come on, uh, you know, and and again, you know, they gotta sell what you. What you trying to say, though? What you trying to well, say? Well, okay, there's there is a sh- there is a show called Love After Lockup. That's oh, on. No, it's before love, before love. Okay, so the love letters. Yeah. Well, and then what happens uh-huh. is these people get married to these cats behind yeah. bars. They come out there talking. About, I'm gonna be good to you. You know, I love you. I got nothing but you on my mind. Bro, you've been in jail for 20, 30 years. And That's he all you love me. And he whoever. only loves me. And whoever else? I, no one. No one. No <laughs> okay. One. He only sent letters to me only. Okay. Just they, to- they were, they were, <laughs> <laughs> okay, just you. Just okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. and you come out there thinking, I'm waiting for him. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to save myself for him. Mm-hmm. He's going to be out mm-hmm. and we're going to get together. I got him six <laughs> pair of J's. You can't tell me nothing. <laughs> I'm ready for him to come home. Timberlands and all. And that's crazy because what, what, okay, I'm going to ask you, even though you're not there, you, you're never going to be there, but what kind of mindset is it of a woman to date a guy behind bars and and commit to him? Not just say I'm going to date him, but I'm not going out. And had a dude say, you better be home when I call you. You better be out in them streets handling, so you know, doing stuff. the same woman who falls in love with the, um, with the guy behind the internet. You know, he's yep. the same guy. The guy you can't quite get your hands on. The guy who can't hurt you. So the woman who's looking to not be hurt, I'll assume. And yes, I better be there when he get home because I want a man to want me to be right where he want me to be. I, like, I want to be wanted. So, yeah, oh, I wow. want you to say to me, yeah, you better be home at 630 when it's time <laughs> for my 630 phone because I haven't been wanted in such a long time. That, that yeah. Oh. I better be there. there. <laughs> Hello? I'm there. I'm here, baby. I'm here. <laughs> that phone right. I'm on it. Oh, no my one God. wanted me to answer their phone calls for so long that now by the time old boy starts to demand it, I'll assume that that's the type of woman who's looking for that. One who's tired of being hurt. Wow. One who doesn't want to be hurt anymore. More. One who's looking for a little more control in her relationship because letting go of that control before didn't work in her advantage. Wow. Right? When you realize, think about the... The choices that women make in a relationship or as they pursue being in a relationship, you didn't just wake up at 13 and 14 and say, I'm a date like this. No. You, you know, don't. you dated very different. Yes. Um, depending on, you know, if you were 16 and how that went versus when you were 21, you know, mm-hmm. and see how that went. Yeah. You know, if you only met guys who never really wanted to love you they only played you out you know you allowed them to have loose sex with you and then they just laugh and you know you were high and dry when you 
called them, they ghosted you, or they didn't answer your phone, or you know they played games on you and didn't quite return your phone calls for days on. You're gonna start playing the guys a little bit different as you get older, and then you start accepting stuff that just feels better to your emotional side. So wow. this man who's locked up has this whole artistic side behind him. He's all poetic now, and he's writing me love letters, and I've never received a love letter before. <laughs> poetry, I've never received poetry wow. before. Art, oh, my God, <laughs> I've never received oh, art before. No. Oh, Come my God. On. So that's the type of woman, you know, the type who on Valentine's Day, instead of your guy getting you the Valentine's Day, that's the day you realize he wasn't quite your Valentine. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, the woman has been conditioned. Um, wow. And now, yes, you locked up, but guess what? You feel so much better than some of the ones that perhaps they've run into before. Wow. That's so, the only thing I can fathom. Oh my God. So I guess what, what you're saying is somehow we're failing, like I said before, you're failing the emotional needs of our little girls in the beginning because it, it didn't just at 21 you should to me for me mm -hmm. if you raise her a certain way and you show her unconditional love you show her what she should be looking for and that she would look at guys she would look out for different guys or wow no not what you raise right let's say you raised her you did a good job you did a great job but then she decided not to go to college Right. Oh, wow. So then she's around a certain group of neighborhood guys. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they perhaps they don't know if they're coming or going. Yeah, that's true. So then she has a certain experience from that particular group of guys who are not necessarily looking for. They don't know what they're looking for. That's true. Or perhaps she did go to college and she came across the group of guys who were just playing games amongst their group of men. And they wanted to, you know, get as many women as they could type of. The True. experiences that women have that are just totally independent of how daddy treated you and how he raised you. Dad did everything right. He was the best father. You know, he made sure wow. you were loved. He made sure he bought you dresses. He showed up to all the daddy and daughter dances. He took you, you know, weekend trips away. You and the family went away. Your dad was did it all. And still your experiences depending on the situations that you can find yourself in, can still make you put yourself in a very guarded position in life or a position where you're just accepting things that you yourself didn't think that you would be willing to accept as your 15 or 16 year old self. Wow. Because the, the men you have to also recall are either, I hate to say broken, but sometimes they just, have this weird concept on how they're supposed to approach women and what they're supposed to do with women. Mm -hmm. And so if you're a young guy and you say, you know, especially in today's day and age, I, I just want to get a regular job and marry and be married by 21 and have kids and be a family. The rest of your peers are not doing that. No. They're going to influence you to like, that's the lady that you're trying to go study with. You're, mm -hmm planning on saving that money for a ring there's a good chance that those guys will because in their mind what you're doing is not correct mm -hmm. and so perhaps they will try to get you to hang out with them and engage in their single lifestyle mm -hmm. and do the things that single men do um which will kind of move you a little bit mm -hmm. and you kind of got to be a really strong person to say no this is the direction that i the path that i want to go on but okay. most guys aren't doing that at that age. And so when you think about when a woman, woman is dating, mm -hmm. who is she really dating? Because we're saying you're supposed to date to be wed. Mm -hmm. But then when you're dating while you're 18 and you're 19 and you're 20 and you're 20, are you da really dating to be wed and you're as, as a 20 mm. year, are you even grooming your child to, so then what's the point of dating at those ages? But you're yeah. still doing it. That's true. That's very true. So you are you are dating with this group of males who are not necessarily there to take care of you as a lady by design. 
Yeah. And then so what does that do to you as a woman? You kind of got to be the uh, in the group, you know, the Cruella <laughs> of the group. Just yeah. so that I can stay as pristine as I need to, but I still got to, you know, mix and mingle and show up and pretend like, you know, I'm here for the party, but I'm not really partying like how the rest of you all are partying. I'm going to stay up till two or three, but I guarantee I'm going home with just me. Yeah. Like, I'm going yeah. to pretend, I'm going to turn up. Yeah, I'm going to have a drink or two, but one of us in the group is sober, and she's going to make sure we all get back home. <laughs> we're not really playing the game like how you think we're playing this game. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. But it's like, how many are doing that? That's true. So we do have this whole realm of people who are dating who get broken along the way because once he that man breaks, I can't go back home to daddy to build me back up. No. Right? Now no, that I'm I already raised you sick. one time Only and once. that's it. And then I, I, I would think I gave you all the tools in mm -hmm. your toolbox mm -hmm. necessary to make the right decisions because you're right. We can only raise them to a point. That's right. And at that point, we gave them everything they need to make the decisions possible, the right decisions. Yeah. Um, if they make the wrong decisions, then you have to live with the consequences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And but you hope that that decision, you know, do, it doesn't cause her, uh, re irreparable harm mm -hmm. to her. Because again, you never know the guy. You never know. You know, it could be the kind of dude put hands on it. Mm -hmm. And then women, what they end up, especially the younger woman, is you're not so forthcoming to what happened to you to to the women. That could make a difference, mm -hmm. right? Let's say I'll tell my my roommate what happened, but she's so young and dumb. She don't really know how to advise me. So now I'm in a corner crying for a whole week, whereas if I'd have just went home for the weekend and went to my mo mom's house or went to auntie's house, auntie would have got me all the way in order. Within two hours, we would have been at the bar, hanging out, <laughs> chopping it up, buying a new outfit, and I would have been back to school all regular by Monday come. That's but true. because I put all my feelings and emotions into somebody who I thought should have knew better, like my peer, mm -hmm. but they didn't have a clue because they were just Ill, just as um, ill experienced as I am. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sitting in the corner, broken, looking silly, and yeah. this this little freshman experience or this experience that happened this year going faster, and it might end up festering for years yes. because I really never sought out the help that I didn't know I needed. Wow. And that's, I guess that's the other crazy thing that I'm just thinking is nowadays there's not really many places you can go to to get answers, it's, especially if you talk to your peers and they're just as confused as you are. Mm -hmm. And you're right, you don't want to go back to your parents because basically they already told you. They mm -hmm. already raised you. Mm -hmm. so it was like, and what? you didn't value them. Uh, Let's not forget that part. Sometimes we just didn't value what our parents had said, but it, and technically you weren't primed to receive what they were saying. Um, but see, that goes back to how did you rate? How were you raised? I mean, if you were under a domineering mm -hmm. uh, relationship with your parents, that they never gave you an opportunity to speak your mind or let you or how you, let you tell them how you feel, and you then they they basically tell you this was. This is what you have to do. You're going to do this, blah, 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 blah. And then you 18 and get ready to go to college or go out the door. You don't really know how to think on your own because your parents never gave you an opportunity to even think on your own because they did it for you. Absolutely. Because it was easy. And to me, that's, that is a problem because you have to let these kids make some decisions mm -hmm. and find out what that repercussion could be. Because you have to lead them. You can't direct them you can't tell them these are absolutes the certain right. absolutes you tell them you got to go to school you're going to graduate you're going to do this but outside of that you know if you tell them how to do their lives or what they should do or make all the decisions for them now they can't really make a decision and they won't go back to you because he's like oh if i make the wrong decision i'll never hear the end of it you i told you don't do this 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 but you did it anyway absolutely it's several occasions where i look at my oldest son <clears throat> and i just simply tell him Stop trying to use my brain. <laughs> it's not going to happen. I'm not thinking for you. <laughs> and keep it moving. Yeah. Yeah, and I just love that phrase. Stop trying to use my brain. Because <laughs> that's what you're trying. Yeah. Yeah. But not, absolutely, there are some parents who you raise your children and you don't uh, force them to think on their own. Mm -hmm. um, and that is critical to make sure that our children can think independently. Yeah, because... Um it's going to come back and haunt them mm -hmm. and the relationships that they're in, all types, whether mm -hmm. it's, you know, marriage, 
normal relationship, work relationships, because then they don't know how to really deal with it, you know, because you can have difficult people all over the world. And whoever you meet, you're gonna, they're gonna, gonna have to deal with someone who's difficult. Right. And if your parents like do this and you're thinking, well, that's what they told me, it's the absolute. No, you should be able to think and say, let me make the right decision based on this particular situation. And you can't, so in a lot of cases, you won't use the same answer for the same situation because situations are different. Right. But if your parents deal with absolutes, then it's they, the same. Then it's the yeah. same, and, it's, and it's, you could make it even worse based uh -huh. on relationships and everything else. So I, I guess, you know, we as, as parents got to make sure that we allow our kids to think for themselves. Um, and mess up. Yeah. Because they going to yes. mess that up, it, right? It's best for them to mess up at home mm -hmm. than to mess out in the streets. Because mm -hmm. if you mess out in the streets, there could be no coming back for it. Mm -hmm. But if you mess up at home, then you can you can tell them if it doesn't go a certain way, I, see, I told you you should be thinking about you should have done it this way or that yeah. way. And I then, can guide you for the next step. Exactly. Exactly. So for so for your young ladies, I mean, what, what, what do you suggest? Do you start to... Because, you know, it gets tricky when they start to get into that 11, 12-year-old because then you start to deal with hormonal issues and other things. How, how, how do you – what do you think is the best way to really truly raise preteens and teens? As far as approaching what and that? Decision-making. Um, for instance, if they have an issue at school, you know, somebody's harassing them at school, someone's bugging them at school, or guys, a young man's uh -huh. harassing them at school. Um, I think, number one, they should know – like the levels to escalate the situation, mm -hmm. right? You start here. Mm -hmm. If at this level it doesn't stop, then you go here. Mm -hmm. If at this level it doesn't stop, then you take it here. Okay. So in school, meaning you need to have enough sense to know that if you never, if someone's bothering you, mm -hmm. touching you, talking to you, and you never told that person something as basic as Stop. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Stop. True. True. It doesn't start with you coming home to tell mom. It doesn't start with you telling the teacher. It starts with you. Mm-hmm. You are the first person in command of you. And exactly. that's the first th lesson I think that I teach all of my children that you can help you way faster than I can help you. Exactly. Right? Exactly. You go to cross, across the street, you need to look both ways first. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm there. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, technically, you make a step out, I'm going to have to try to snatch you back. Exactly. That came after what you did. So you take the lead in what you're doing. Somebody's bothering you, you speak first mm -hmm. and try to change that situation. Mm -hmm. If that doesn't work, then you go to the next step, mm -hmm. which is if it's in school, then you go to – you know, mom or the teacher, whichever one is more convenient. Mm -hmm. If that doesn't work, then you know that we're going to take it up another step from there and, you know, go through the proper channels as far as administration or getting in touch with, um, you know, those people's um, parents. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not the straight and narrow mom. I don't tell the kids not to hit. Mm -hmm. I'm not that type of person. I believe that... Um, if someone has put their hands on you, you immediately put your hands back on them in mm -hmm. the playground, in mm -hmm. in the realm of K through eight. Yes. My conversation pieces for the ninth and 12th graders does change mm -hmm. because, in my opinion, if we've established ourselves from K through eight, then mm -hmm. we've, we that that reputation comes goes with us to high school. Absolutely. So I advise my K through eight um, children that if someone puts their hands on you, you put your hands back on them and make sure the teacher sees you mm -hmm. because the teacher needs to know you, that mm -hmm. you are not the child that people just willy nilly put their hands on and then think that you just about to sit down and tell the teacher. Mm -hmm. No, we're going to tell the teacher after the fact because you handle your situations. And this goes right back to Will Smith and the but again, this is not, you know, the children are in leadership positions, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody here is equally yoked. Exactly. And so if you equal to me and you slap in the mess out of me, I'm going to show you what getting slapped out feels like, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, all the way up into eighth grade. Um, because clearly, you know, there's a problem you have with me and I mm -hmm. am the only one who can fix it. The teacher can't technically tell you to stop 
teasing a kid. True. They continue to tease the kid. Mm-hmm. And then you're mad, mad that the kid then turned around and slapped fire. No, that's what that kid was supposed to have done. Get True. that kid a three to five days expansion and let's move on from there. Yeah. Cool. Um, so off the break is the independent thinking as far as how you're maneuvering and handling yourself in the classroom. Mm-hmm. That's always to me, number one. Okay. Know how to handle yourself in the classroom um, because that's your first that's your first encounter with people that are not safe. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So when you're at home and you're in a space with your family and your cousins, those are supposed to be safe. True. Right. Meaning your cousin whack you, you know, you can yell out and mom will come to your rescue type of thing. Exactly. But here there is no mom. There mm-hmm. is no dad. There is no uncle. There is no auntie. There is no grandma. This is not this is not the safe space. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And so for that reason, you need to know how to handle yourself in this arena. And that's where the grooming of the independent thinking comes from is that first introduction to the school system, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Okay. And how you handle yourself there. Um, the interactions as far as relationships are concerned come with the interactions from um, your friends. Mm-hmm. How you respect your ma- male or female. Mm-hmm. How you respect your male friend. How you respect your female friend or your best, you know, people who you call in your best friends mm-hmm. or your classmates. True. True. Relationships are relationships. When that you is know true. basic respect and how to deal with each other, that's going to take you a long way. And so you groom them not just from um, a significant other type of relationship, but just, you know, how to be a good friend, how to be a good person. How, how to be a good person. Yes. That, that, it, that right there is one thing that everybody wants to be perfect. You know, There's no perfection. You have to be perfectly imperfect. That's it. That's it. And once people realize that's what you're really striving for, we won't even have 90% of the issues that we have right now. Mm-hmm. But everybody keeps thinking somehow they're going to become, they're going to be perfect. Mm-hmm. You're just not going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, you just have to make sure that you respect others. And I think that's the biggest issue overall is respect. It's like we have to, I don't know, we, I don't know when we lost it, but it's like no one has no respect for anyone. You know, for whatever reason, um, they rather just do things and, you know, just do it rather than respect someone else's view, that someone else's different view on different things, parenting skills. And, and again, if everyone raised their kids like you raised your kids, you have no problem allowing your kids in someone else's home. Right. You're not going to allow your kid at someone else's home because if you know that kid off the hook, you can only imagine what they're going through at, in their house. Well, yeah. So absolutely, and you don't want that to rub off on your kid. But more than that, you don't want that to rub. You don't have to roll up in somebody else's house and kind of correct someone's anything. Like, no, you didn't. You, uh, you don't want any of that to create any type of rifts or tiffs in no ways near your home. No, like it's just certain things that you just wouldn't even tolerate or set yourself up for. Um, and it and it is a shame to see because we are raising our children more distant um, from the neighbors in the community, I think, than we've ever had. We mm-hmm. let less children in, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can only imagine the kids who used to kind of get taken care of in the community, by the community, what mm-hmm. happened to those kids? Exactly. You know, they're still there. Just who's taking care of them now? I really, they take care of themselves because now, because of the dynamic, both parents have to work. Mm-hmm. So there's no one, you're a latchkey kid. Yes. Um, so you take care of yourself. You yes. just know you get in the house, lock the door, don't mm-hmm. open the door for nobody, don't answer the phone, don't look at that window, don't do yeah, this. Yeah, but the latchkey kids used to have Miss Miss Jones downstairs. Look That's out true. For the latchkey, you know, uh, 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 the man of the neighborhood used to keep an eye on them, make sure they had a little snack when they come around mm-hmm. that corner. Y'all That's kids true. them toss out some apple. You know, <laughs> yep. I mean, the neighborhood That's true. used to know who the kids was that you used to have to keep a special eye on and if they come out of the house crying and boohooing and looking crazy you know ain't no adults in there nope so you know either the siblings had a fight and you got to jump in and make sure you calm them down and send them back into the house mm-hmm. or you know you got to get involved because you know their mother is not home mm-hmm. but now we just kind of leaving those kids to kind of you better stay up in that house type of thing and that's also the problem because when you're leaving kids by themselves in the house unlike before you now have the internet 
Mm-hmm. So now you're leaving these kids in the house mm-hmm. by themselves with the internet. Right. And the internet is not one of those things, you know, that you could just say, well, I can protect it because if they have homework to do, or other things to do, they have to use it. But kids are curious. Yeah. So now they go and start finding other things you didn't really want them to look at. And yeah. not to mention, these kids are a lot more advanced than we ever were. I mean, when it comes to they're more technologically s- savvy than w- we were. I mean, mm-hmm. of course, we didn't have computers back then. But it's just certain things that they could get themselves into not knowing because there's no one really supervising them, which is another issue with this whole how the work flow is working with two families have to everybody has to work with to make ends meet not to work to get over but to work both has to work in order to just pay the bills which is unfortunate but ultimately the kid suffers because now they basically have to grow up sometimes by themselves or the tv or the internet raises Mm -hmm. them um and unfortunately you know that seems to be one of the conversation pieces that nobody really wants to have is why are our households being strapped the way that they are where both parties in the household must work Mm -hmm. and it's like you said it's not to you know be super comfortable it is just to make ends meet Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. especially in the area that we're living in today um you must have two people in the household working must um yes just to come up with the basic (laughs) The basic. We're not talking about trips. We're not talking talking about. We're talking about degrees and your background and all that. Yeah, you need to be two. Yes. And and it's so crazy. Employed people. And that's crazy to me because there are kids right now getting out of college in hundreds and thousands of dollars worth of debt Mm -hmm. and can't get a job that can pay them maybe a little bit over minimum wage. Right. But yet you keep telling everybody you got to go to college, you got to go to this. You used to, when we went to college, you go to college, you're going to have a good job. Mm-hmm. Somebody going to hire you. Oh, you got a degree. Well, you well, we're shifting away from jobs, getting to contracting. Exactly. <laughs> Businesses got smart. Yes. And so as a consumer, you know, of all the goods, whether the goods be the, um, the colleges or mm-hmm. whatever trains us to be able to get employed, we got to really start picking and choosing yeah. what are we going to be consuming. Because if it don't make sense, then... It don't make sense. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. And again, that, you know, it's hard because now you want to point your kids. You know, the whole thing I talk about is is to know yourself you, and the kid needs to know who they are. But then comes in the whole vocation discussion. It's like they may like art, mm-hmm. but art ain't going to pay the bills. Mm-hmm. So you're going to push them in somewhere because you want them to be able to take care of themselves. Um, and in this world today, you you really can't, unless you're lucky enough to be in IT or accounting or management, if you're into, I, I don't want to even say fluff, but if you're into art and, that, and history and that type of stuff, unless you want to be a teacher, you, you know, you're pretty much pigeonholing we, we, how much money you're going to make, which is unfortunate because now these kids go to school for all this, and now they got student debt up to yin-yang, and you... I know people paying twelve hundred dollars a month student loans. Yeah. For yeah. and and they came doing me twelve hundred dollars take home a month. Yeah, but again, you know, you did, you just did it wrong. You didn't crunch any of the numbers before you approached it, and then you didn't have an end game. See, we can't just play the game and never have an idea how to get out of it. Mm-hmm. Someone put that little. Uh, idea in my head that we jump into the workforce or we jump into the you know jump going to college is technically your attempt to jump into workforce too so mm-hmm. i'm gonna say them at like the same but you jump into the workforce without a real concept or end game of how to jump out of it first mm-hmm. you just jump in mm-hmm. you don't jump out and say this is how i'm getting in and getting out you say this is how i get in i get in by applying to college i get in by applying to a job mm-hmm. you just get in Mm-hmm. And as long as you get in, you're good. True. And you don't really know where you're going to stop or which way you're going to go. You don't have a plan at all. Mm-hmm. You've not crunched any of the numbers. You no. didn't say, hey, I ca- actually can't afford this school mm-hmm. because technically the g- degree that I want is going to give me too much debt. So maybe I should go to a state college mm-hmm. or, you know, something that's more local, that's mm-hmm. more affordable so that I don't have all this debt. once mm-hmm. I." Because to me... 
18 to 22 when most of the kids go to college to study you know anything any old thing that they don't really have a clue on mm -hmm. that's a social grooming time as well yeah and it to is. be socially groomed at such a at the at large price points just isn't going to make sense of like you said you coming out with an art degree mm -hmm. it's nothing that can kind of like it doesn't it wasn't a sensible investment anymore now you just there wasting money and if your family got the money to waste then blow it I'm, exactly. I'm down for blowing money if you got it to blow if you got it um but if you don't then you just chose poorly because you didn't have a good plan yeah i um i saw one student who opted to go to another state university as opposed to their own state university mm -hmm. and i think the difference was maybe twenty thousand dollars a year mm-hmm you spent 30 grand a year versus maybe uh 15 grand a year okay. to go to school because you wanted to leave the state that's the only reason that's the only reason so the the, the program wasn't better nope oh wow and you know how many other people are making poor choices like this especially yeah. our first timers yes where this is the first kid that goes off the car no my kid is going out of town Mm -hmm. No, my kid is going to live on campus, mm -hmm. but nobody in the family really has a clue on how to navigate these, you know, the whole situation. So it is, it's poor planning and we're consuming this and we're running into the debt thinking that we're doing our kids some type of, you know, justice. And we're really engaging in poor planning with, <laughs> with them. That's yeah. not fair. Yeah. I, and, you know, and especially the days where it's, it's just. It's just asinine that, you know, they're having discussions about freezing the uh, student loan payments. Well, these kids can't afford it anyway. Mm -hmm. so, so you, if we can find billions of dollars to send overseas for someone else's war, I'm pretty sure you can take billions of dollars and pay off all these kids' student loans. Mm -hmm. Because you, you basically, you're, you're, hit, you're stopping your growth. Because these kids are stuck under that debt that can't go away. You mm -hmm. can't say, oh, you know what, I'm going to file bankruptcy and get rid of it. It mm -hmm. doesn't go away. Right. So that hinders them doing things like, you know, buy, starting families, mm -hmm. uh, you know, want to buy a house, mm -hmm. want to buy a new car. Because they can't. They can't afford it. Right, right. So then you hear people in, in society talk about, well, you know, people ain't having kids like you used to. People can't afford to have kids. It's uncomfortable. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's hard for people to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. But let alone you want now uh, bring a kid in and no, oh, I can't afford it. Mm -hmm. So the kids suffer. So that adds additional stress on to people who are out here. So to me, it's just we got to figure a, a better way. We got to figure out a way to make sure that these kids are going to school and when they're coming out, they can get jobs that they can really live and grow and prosper, and so they can get a family and everything. But you know, I so don't know what's going to happen. Desire. Okay, so. But like I said, this this has been, wow, an op eye-opening experience when it comes to just, you know, the things we've been talking about today, just, you know, the the slap around the world and the, how to deal with raise kids and, you know, dealing with, you know, the kids that decide to go and do better. And they still got to pay the price for it. Right. So we definitely have to, you know, do better as a society. So, you know. Like I said, we are definitely going to be um, having further conversations about that on top of all the other things we need to talk about. So, but you know what? We're going to wrap this up today. I and, enjoyed um, it. Be With going pleasure. To, and always a pleasure to you, always. And like I said, you guys, if you love the channel, you love what we're talking about, please hit that like button and subscribe to us. And always, I'm going to leave you with this. You have to overcome all to become one. That means you have to spend the time and take the effort to work on yourself to become the best version of you that you can be. So what you want to leave the people with, T? Hmm. Really thinking about the relationship side of things and that the relationships that you create um, with your mom, with your coworkers, with your significant others just be mindful that relationships are just that relationships take care of each other that's it oh oh well peoples we'll be, be back at you real soon so you just was listening to on the mic with the m and t see you guys later
Peace. Take care.